hello students uh, last video we have discussed the silom and the germ layer hope you have understood that now let's just start with the another basis of classification so the next basis of classification the fifth basis of classification this is body plan see what is actually body plan body plan means this organism have what type of system first of all see in this body plan we are going to have three different types of organisms first of all those organisms uh, we have seen in case of phylum porifera in case of phylum, phylum porifera we have seen the body plan is cell aggregate so cell aggregate means what cell aggregate means the organisms which have only the cells in case of them they are going to have just loosely aggregated cells these are just a combination of cell they don't have any type of such uh, mouth or inner or anything like that so this type of organism don't have any type of plant so that's why we will uh, group those organism that is the phylum porifera all of the species under the phylum porifera they are going to have the cell aggregate body plan so just see in case of phylum porifera we are going to see the cell aggregate body plan now the next uh, body plan this is the blind cell body plan now we will understand actually how many types of body plan we have one is blind cell and another is the tube within tube body plan so just see what is that blind sac and tube within tube body plan. First of all, what happened? Uh, I already have told you that how actually fertilization would uh, actually takes place. So first of all, from the mother, the ovum and from the father, the spermatozoa that will come meet, fuse, fertilize and after that they will form the zygote and this way the germ layer forms and after that gradually whenever all these germ layers start to form their own organs or organ system one of organ system is developed that is the digestive system or the canal now what happens to the digestive system see if that digestive system see uh, normally what is happening in case of us the alimentary canal one of the uh, one end of the alimentary canal have the mouth with which we will have ingestion that means we take food with the help of the mouth and the inners who actually expels or ingest the waste product what is happening to this blind side body plan this organisms will have only one opening we cannot call this is as the mouth or anus the same opening serves both as a mouth and a anus that means from that opening they will take the food also and remove the waste product also so just see how they actually look like suppose this is the organism okay so what is happening they will have only one opening and with that opening they will ingest also that means they will take the food also so that food particle they will take ingest with the help of the same opening and what is happening to the waste product how it will be just removed outside so the waste product whatever suppose this is the cavity where they have digestion and all then after that they remove the waste product so the removal of the waste product will also occur with the same uh, opening so that is the waste so that waste will be also removed by the same opening that means this opening is now acting both as a mouth as well as an anus so that type of body plan where the alimentary canal have only one opening or that system that whole organism have only one opening with which they take the food also and remove the waste product also that type of body plan is known as blind sac body plan now how many type of organism have this blind sac body plan see blind sac body plan is going to be present in case of cylindrates then tenophores and the next one that is platyhelminths in case of platyhelminths too the 
body plan will be blind set. Now come to the next last type of body plan that is tube with it, tube body plan. Now just see what is happening to this organism. Suppose this is the organism. Now just take the example. This is suppose a butterfly. So what is happening with this mouth they will ingest the food first of all they will ingest the food with the help of the mouth then after that they will have a canal that is the digestive canal or we can call also GI tract we can call it also the elementary canal see it's not like the straight structure I'm just giving you just the uh, example so that you can understand so what is happening with the help of the mouth they will always ingest the food they will take the food always and with the anus they will remove the waste product so this waste will be removed by this anus so that type of body plan where the body itself is a tube and within the tube there is elementary canal there is another tube so that type of body plan where the organism have a separate mouth with with the help of what they will take the food and the anus with the help of what they will remove the waste product that type of body plan is known as tube within tube body plan now how many types of organisms are going to have this uh, body plan see in case of escalmentis right escalmentis they are also known as nematelmids this can be also known as nematoda so these organisms escalmentis up to the last that is chordata the last phylum all of these organisms they are going to have the tube within tube body plan now just see the next another subdivision you are going to have in the tube within tube body plan see this tube within tube body plan is divided into once again two types of body plan see this is suppose the tube within tube body plan so we are going to have two types of tube uh, type of uh, tube within tube body plan see one the first one this is known as the prostomia and the next type of body plan under tube within tube body plan this is deuterostomia so what is this prostomia and deuterostomia first of all let's just break this word first of all pro means first and stomia sto just remember one word here only stone stone means mouth and here deutero so you can divide this word into two words so what are they deutero this is means die or by means second so here deutero means second and stomia stone stone means mouth now just see what is happening whenever this organism is in the embryonic stage at that time the elementary canal develop first mouth and then it, the same elementary canal will develop the anus. So that type of body plan where the embryonic elementary canal forms first of all mouth and after that it forms the anus that type of body plan under tube within tube body plan is known as prostomia. The next next one that is deuterostomia deuterostomia means that elementary canal now in the embryonic state the baby whenever it is in the mother's womb at that time this elementary canal develops first of all anus and after the anus it forms the mouth so that type of body plan is known as the deuterostomic body plan so how many organisms are under that prostomia you can get the example uh, that is Anelida, Arthropoda, then Mollusca. These organisms are going to have prostomic body plan. Next one, Deuterostomy. After the Mollusca, next phylum is Echinodermata. That means right from the Echinodermata up to the last, that means the core data all of the organisms are deuterostomic remember deuterostomia means those organisms where the embryonic alimentary canal develop first of all anus and then it forms the mouth it is known as deuterostomic organism and the prostomic organism means those organisms that embryonic alimentary canal forms first of all mouth and then the anus that type of 
uh, body plan is known as prostomic body plan. Now, once again, let's just see how many types of body plan we have seen. One is cell aggregate where the organism have only just the aggregation of cell. They have just the cells. So those cells, they don't have any proper mouth, anus, anything. These are just combination of cells. So that type of body plan we can call just as the simplest type of body plan that is cell aggregate. Next one, blind sac body plan. Blind sac body plan means those organisms which have only one opening. That opening serves both as a mouth as well as the anus. That type of body plan is known as the blind sac body plan. The third type of body plan is known as the tube within tube body plan where the organisms have an elementary canal inside the body and this organism this elementary canal have one end where the mouth is present with the help of what it takes the food and another end of the elementary canal is the anus which will help always in the ingestion of the food or removal of the waste product so that type of organisms are going to have tube within tube body plan now under the tube within tube body plan we are going to have two groups of organisms one second see one is prostomic animal another is the deuterostomic animal or simply we can call it as prostomia and deuterostomia pro means first and stomia means mouth so those organisms where the alimentary canal first of all forms the mouth and then the anus in the embryonic state is known as the prostomic animals and deuterostomic animals means that embryonic alimentary canal forms first of all the anus and then the mouth is known as the deuterostomic animal after that let us see the next uh, basis of classification now so the next basis of classification is segmentation. Now, what is segmentation? Already you have seen somewhere um, in the environment around you that lots of organisms have some body parts or divisions. Externally, it is visible in some of the organisms. They are known as the segments. You can simply see those organisms. Suppose this is one centipede so in case of this animal you can see they are going to have some body parts or divisions they are going to be known as the segments or this phenomenon is known as segmentation yeah there is another term for segmentation it is also called as metamerism now what is metamerism metamerism or segmentation see lots of organisms can also show divisions but to be called as a truly segmented animal they need to have some criteria to be called as a truly segmented animal see each organism obviously it has to show some segments but along with that also remember in each of the segments some repeated organ should be present in exactly same region suppose see uh, one organ that is skin that has already been repeated second one suppose here this organism is going to have one excretory pore so each and every segment should have the excretory pore in that same location from first to last then only we can call this organism is a truly segmented animal so those organisms which show the segmentation this organisms they are known as the metamerically segmented animal now just see how many types of animals they are going to show this segmentation truly the segmented animal see segmentation means those organisms show the divisions in the body they are called as segmented animal this segmentation is also known as metamerism and those segments they are called as metamers m-e-t-a m-e-r-e so these are also known as metamers now just see how many types of animals will show segmentation in animal kingdom we have only three phylums which show segmentation first anilida anilida means those organisms 
like one example i can give you to uh, give you the example that is atom so in case of atom the segments are present they show segmentation or metamerism so in case of any lids these are the segmented animal truly segmented animal then after that the atro poda arthropods are also segmented animal you can see the arthropods all around us they are uh, arthropods like the mosquitoes the cockroaches they are the arthropoda so arthropoda you can see the cockroaches in case of cockroaches their body is divided into head thorax abdomen in the thorax they will have segments in the abdomen they will have segments those are segmented animal so arthropoda will show segmentation and the last one that is chordata so in case of chordates also segments are present but one thing you should know that though these animals they are segmented animal those segmentations can be appeared from the external side which are visible as well as from the internal side which are not visible so some of the organism yeah if it is present outside also in the inside also does not matter they will be segmented yes all of these three animals anelida arthropoda and chordid they are the segmented animal but what is happening in case of annelids annelids will show both external and internal both external and internal segmentations are shown by this annelids in case of arthropods only external segments you can see only externally they will have the segments that means from outside only they will have segments from inside inside their body they don't have any segments next one chordates which will have only internal segment that means segments are present only internally this type of organisms chordates they will include the internally segmented animals so segmentation is the another basis of classification where you can see there are the three groups of annelids arthropoda annelida and chordata annelids show externally as well as internally the segmentation arthropods will have only external segmentation and chordates will have only internal segmentation now let's just see the next basis of classification so the last basis of classification is the notochord so what is notochord notochord is a stiff rod like structure which is developed in the embryonic uh, state in the dorsal surface of the embryo what is happening whenever the baby is in the mother's womb then what happens first of all the organ uh, different type of organs start to develop and this way actually one rod like or stiff like stiff rod like structure is also developed Uh, so what is happening first of all this organism if i give you the example of the human baby what happened they actually developed the heart this way they developed the heart then after that it formed the uh, brain then after that what happened it developed a stiff structure on the dorsal surface that uh, what is dorsal and what is ventral surface see if you suppose take your example in case of human this front side this front side is the ventral side and the opposite side is the dorsal side similarly this side on the sides these are the lateral sides so we have ventral side and the opposite one is the dorsal side so dorsally we have the notochord so what happened this notochord is developed on the dorsal surface and this will actually recognize these are actually present in some of the organism and some of the organism do not have this notochord so those organism which have the notochord these are known as the uh, chordates and those organism which do not have the notochord they are known as the non chordates so just see what is it in case of that notochord remember this is a stiff rod like structure so this stiff rod like structure is developed in the embryonic state in the embryos itself this notochord start to form so in case of the embryos in the embryo the notochord forms next one once uh, another important point you have to know that this notochord form 
forms in dorsal side. So already understood this is, this is the dorsal side. If you take the example of human, suppose this is human, uh, this is the ventral side and the opposite side will be dorsal. So this will be ventral, then the opposite side will be dorsal. So dorsally we will uh, have the notochord. Now another important point you have to know that this notochord is developed from which germ layer. Remember this notochord is developed from the mesoderm. So it is mesodermal in origin and why this notochord has to develop? Actually this notochord is a structure that actually provides us protection and a definite structure. So what is it? It's a part of the endoskeleton. It is a part of endoskeleton and this actually provide, this provide protection and structure to that animal. One posture of the animal is actually because of the notochord. And based on this notochord, presence or absence of the notochord, we are going to have three types of animals. First of all, see, those organisms which do not have the notochord, these are known as the non cordates so this is very ob obvious that in case of those organisms which do not have the notochord, they are known as no uh, non-chordates. And those organisms which have the notochord, they are known as chordates. But in between, there is one another organism also which actually have the notochord. But this notochord will be not known as a notochord that is actually rod-like structure. But this is not a complete notochord. So those type, that type of animal, they are known as hemichordata or hemichordates. So in case of hemichord, hemi means half chordate means chordata. So those organisms which have a notochord like stiff rod like structure. So that type of animal is going to be hemichordate. See evolution whenever it is taking place in one day a complete proper well developed organism did not develop. So what happened gradually the organs start to form. First of all they need to actually fill the uh, absence of that organ then after that due to the absence of that organ what type of problems had appeared and to uh, adapt themselves in that environment they start to form those organs so what is happening to hemichordates they actually feel the problem that due to that uh, absence of notochord they're not getting a proper shape they're not able to properly have a body structure in locomotion they're having problems so that's why the notochords start to form but what happened in the same organism the fully fledged notochord did not develop so that type of organism would try to form the notochord but a complete notochord is not able or uh, not possible to form by them that type of animals they are not uh, hemichordates and those organisms now are capable of forming the notochord they are known as chordates so just see in case of chordates also we are going to have three types of animals one is urochordata Second one is cephalochordata and the third type is the vertebrata. So let's just see what are they actually. First of all, under the non chordates how many types of animals are included? See, under the non chordates we will have the poriferans. Obviously, this organism do not have this notochord. Then after that we have cylindrates, stenophora, platyhelminths, escalminthes, enleda, arthropoda, mollusca and echinodermata. That means from porifera up to echinodermata without any exception. All of them are non chordates We have a very small, actually this hemichordates earlier was included in the non chordates but later on the classification when get more and more developed, then there was a complete separate phylum actually uh, was included that was hemichordata. So there is a uh, notochord-like structure has been developed. What is that term? We can call it as the stomochord. So a notochord-like structure is developed that is known as stomochord. Then after that come to the chordata. So chordata is a phylum. Under that phylum we are going to have lots of uh, divisions. 
First division is urochordata, then cephalochordata, and then the vertebrata. So what is happening to urochordata? Remember, uro means tail. Okay. Next one, chordata means notochord. Those organisms which have the notochord in the tail region, they are known as the urochordate. Next one, cephalochordata. Cephal means head. Right from the head to the last end, they have the notochord. They are known as the cephalochordata. And what is happening to vertebrata? See, there is a very important term. We actually confuse and in between these two words, we actually interchangeably, we use also. What are they? One is nerve cord and another is the notochord. See, most of the time you may get confused in between non uh, nerve cord and the notochord. Nerve cord is completely different and notochord is completely different. Notochord is the stiff rod-like structure which is a part of the endoskeleton which provide you the protection or structure. Nerve cord in actually is a completely different structure. Nerve cord is nothing but it is actually one part of the brain itself see suppose this is the organism here this is the notochord then what will happen this is the brain and from the brain one structure is developed in case of us what is present spinal cord so that spinal cord is nothing but the nerve cord so nerve cord is present in case of cylindrates up to the last so what is happening in case of non cordates also they have the nerve cord but notochord is not present what is happening to the hemicordates and cordates? They have the nerve cord also as well as the notochord too. In case of hemicordate, along with that nerve cord, we will call a structure present, stiff structure, that is stomochord. What is happening to the chordata? Chordata will have C. This chordates, urochordate and cephalochordate, they have separate nerve cord and separate notochord too. But what is happening in case of vertebrata? C. In case of urochordate and cephalochordate, let me draw a diagram so that you can understand. See, so what is happening to this animal? Just a simple diagram. They will have the nerve cord above and just below that they are going to have the notochord. So notochord and nerve cord, this blue colored lining is the nerve cord and just below that notochord is present. So above this notochord we have the nerve cord so they are separately present in case of urochordata and cephalochordata but what is happening in case of vertebrata see what happened to vertebrates see this structure is suppose the notochord this is a hollow structure rod like structure stiff structure and inside what we have the nerve cord or the spinal cord so that the spinal cord can be protected now what happened from this spinal cord a number of uh, spinal nerves they will arise so if the spinal nerve have to arise and see this is the notochord suppose inside that spinal cord is present so from the spinal cord a number of nerves are arising so those spinal nerve if a rod like structure is covering whole spinal cord then from where this nerve cord will arise from so that's why what happened that this notochord start to develop into some pieces so what happened to them this notochord is there but that notochord is now gradually develop some pieces and piece means vertebrae so those organisms which have now the vertebral column see there is a difference between the notochord and vertebral column what is happening to this urochordata and cephalochordata nerve cord and notochord they are separately present nerve cord above and below notochord they are separately present now the most developed organism that is vertebrata where actually we are also included what happened to us we feel that problem that this nerve cord is so much superficial and this is also very much important for us so that nerve cord should be protected so how it will be protected we could actually uh, have a covering and that covering should be a stiff structure of it should be bony so what happened this notochord start to have start to protect that spinal cord now the spinal cord have numbers of spinal nerve from where the uh, spinal nerves are arising so from where the spinal nerve will arise if the notochord completely blocks those spinal 
spinal cord then what will happen so that's why what happened this notochord was developing some pieces so those pieces are known as vertebrae so word in between the two vertebrae we will have a space suppose this is a vertebrae this is a another vertebrae in between these two vertebrae will develop a p, uh, space and from that space the nerve uh, the spinal nerves will arise so that space from where the spinal nerves will arise that is known as the uh, intervertebral space from the intervertebral space the spinal nerve will arise so this way the notochord develop some pieces they are known as vertebrae and those organisms which have the notochord within which the spinal cord is present and now notochord is developing some pieces they are known as the vertebrates so there is a very famous line is there you can get somewhere in the book also in some questions also it came that all the vertebrates are chordates but all the chordates are not vertebrates see cephalochordate and neurochordate they are not vertebrate why because they have separate nerve cord and notochord but what is happening in case of vertebrates vertebrates have nerve cord inside and outside they will have the vertebrates so all the vertebrates they are chordates but all the chordates are not vertebrate they are neurochordate and cephalochordates they are not vertebrates so up to this these are the basis of classification later we'll see some another type of divisions they are not under the basis of classification but then also we will need it so in the next video we'll see all those complexities or another uh, complexities in the different organ system thank you